Uh, good evening, everyone, and it's an honor to be the last speaker in the in the conference because uh, it was very interesting for me to listen to all these presentations. Um, so I'm going to report on some work we did on uh, um, software uh, packet switching and uh, interaction with uh, virtual machines, and this stuff has been done over the past three years by myself and a long list of people, which I will acknowledge in the, in the last uh, slide, so it will remain in your mind. Um, so we, as many others, uh, uh, addressed the, the problem of software packet switching, and we realized that uh, doing the stuff using the network stack in the operating system was uh, uh, not as performant as we wanted, and so uh, we tried to come up with uh, different approaches, uh, different solutions that would uh, allow us to exploit uh, the capabilities of the hardware when these were present, because there is some hardware that is not capable to, to run at line rate with short packets, et cetera. And so with the two main things that uh, we developed are uh, a framework called NetMap for uh, fast packet I.O., which initially was uh, targeted to uh, just hardware devices, and then uh, seeing that the API was efficient and useful, et cetera, we built a, a software switch called Vale, and, uh, and then another uh, set of features that uh, use the, the, the Net, NetMap API to make processes and virtual machine communicate with, uh, with each other. Now, the performance of the software data plane depends on a lot of components, and uh, as one, uh, people tend to measure performance in packets per second, on bits per second, et cetera. Now, uh, these numbers only hold for very specific uh, workflows and configuration, et cetera. So in, uh, I will try to, to measure my performance as it was suggested before with uh, uh, cycles or nanoseconds per packet as, as, as the throughput, which is a measure that uh, involves too many, too many pieces. Anyways, uh, uh, looking at a typical uh, uh, system which uh, involves communication between entities, uh, we have the basic I.O. costs uh, f through the device or the software uh, port that uh, communicates with the switch. We have uh, flow table performance or whatever action is done in the software switch. We have uh, dependency on packet sizes, of course, uh, Dealing with large packets, uh, it's uh, in a way easier. We have to deal with traffic patterns, which influence the uh, impact on, on cache, locality, etc. And we have the efficiency on the hypervisor's uh, data path. So we will only deal with the uh, two lines in, in green. So the basic IO cost and the hypervisor's data path. Um, so the, the overview of the talk, I'll give a short, well, not so short, but background on NetMap Valley. So you know, um, have a, a clear idea of what it does, uh, integration with OpenV switch, uh, so I will uh, abide the, the constraint of mentioning OpenV switch, uh, and discuss some work we did on the hypervisor and guest data paths in the context of uh, several virtualization solutions, and then uh, uh, some, uh, uh, I will mention our future work and uh, we can have some discussion. Um, so. I just said uh, device hire is expensive, and so people came up with different solutions. So uh, more or less at the same time, there were DPDK, NetMap, uh, Package Shader was an I.O. library done in, in Korea from people who tried to use GPUs efficiently with uh, uh, network uh, I.O. Uh, PF Ring DNA, which is a solution uh, by my friend Luca there in Pisa, widely used in the, by, by people who do monitoring. Um, <coughs> Most of these solutions uh, have uh, heavy modifications in the, in the device driver and in various ways, either writing the device driver completely in user space or uh, modifying uh, some existing drivers, etc. With NetMap, we try to, to have a slightly different approach, reuse as much as possible of the existing code and have only a minimal patch on, on the uh, internal device driver, which uh, uh, affects the part we where we really need to go fast, basically the packet movement up and down uh, between the link and the whatever uh, is the, the user of the, of the data. What are the options for virtual ports? I mean, the, the problem for, uh, for net, uh, physical ports has, um, has been solved. And for virtual ports, um, the standard interface is basically TAP or variants of TAP. Uh, we have seen in the previous talks that there are solutions based on the PDK and shared memory variants. And uh, uh, we also more, more or less at the same time uh, came up uh, with our uh, software switch uh, uh, approach, uh, uh, with our software switch Vale, which reuses the, uh, exactly the NetMap API also for communicating with, uh, uh, with the virtual machine. 
uh, there is the question here whether we can use uh, shared memory uh, avoiding copying at all. Uh, I used to be a believer in zero copy, now not anymore because I think that in the end uh, any sensible application will have to touch the packet one or more time depending on the configuration. So saving one copy is not probably to, to give you a lot of advantage in terms of uh, uh, time per packet, uh, cache pollution, etc. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, Sharing memory uh, carries uh, the, the, the problem of uh, protection between uh, different domains. In the case of virtual support of virtual machines, uh, the virtual machines are not mutually trusted typically, so you really want to have some separation. And in the old times, uh, operating system tried to uh, implement this separation by tricks like page flipping, etc. but they, they are too expensive these days with the uh, multi-core system. So uh, we, in uh, the Valley Switch, we use data copy for uh, um, achieving this protection and uh, uh, with a cost which uh, we consider bearable. Uh, one thing that uh, we and everybody who was working in this area uh, have learned is that uh, for, uh, efficient, for efficiency, you really need to, to exploit batching as much as possible because uh, all the synchronization is particularly expensive. It involves uh, IO operations on, uh, on um, IO buses or um, BMXs or interrupts, etc. So we really want to amortize these costs uh, as much as possible. NetMap uh, started in 2011 and went on FreeBSD only first and then um, we made a, free, a Linux port by basically wrapping the uh, uh, FreeBSD API calls into equivalent calls on Linux. So now we have uh, code parity between the two platforms uh, and uh, performance is about the same on both platforms. Um, a year uh, later we came up with the software switch and, uh, and then we started looking at uh, hypervisors. So we started first uh, some work uh, almost two years ago on QEMU extensions. Part of it is already upstreamed into QEMU. Uh, we implemented more features for NetMap pipes, uh, uh, mirror ports, uh, etc. And uh, we are now looking at other uh, hypervisors and performance uh, optimizations. Uh, the code is available uh, on uh, public repository. It's already in three for FreeBSD. There is an out of three uh, kernel module for Linux. And there is a pickup library. Somebody was asking yesterday about uh, the PDK. Um, we also have one. So basically, you can take a pickup application and run it on top of NetMap without uh, even recompiling. There is a version of Click, which uh, Click actually has native NetMap support. And uh, we are working on those uh, hypervisors. And uh, the code for most of this stuff is publicly available. The, if there is something you cannot find, it's just because I was lazy or I forgot or I have a private repository that I haven't published yet. But Please ask. So the key design principles in NetMap and probably in other frameworks uh, which uh, have a similar goal are um, to, to amortize costs by uh, batching as much as possible, remove the, the costs that can, can be removed. So for instance, we do not allocate and, and free buffers every time we transfer a packet. We try to do pre-allocation. Uh, we try to remove copies when possible through, memory, through share, sharing memory. And we try to reduce a certain runtime costs that are unavoidable by, for instance, having one flat pack packet format as much as possible instead of a linked list of buffers with a ton of options that should be checked at every layer of the, of the processing to, to figure out what to do next and who is in charge of a certain operation. And uh, the uh, data structure uh, used by NetMap are uh, mapped in a shared memory region, which includes uh, packet buffers and rings, uh, and, uh, and those uh, buffers and rings uh, are also uh, seen by the other and programmed by the other. Contrary to uh, the PDK, uh, NetMap resides uh, entirely in the, in the kernel. And it's basically uh, one, sorry. Uh, it's basically one kernel module, this uh, uh, red block, uh, which sits on, on the side of the, of the network stack and uh, uh, let you put a physical device uh, into uh, NetMap mode. And when this happens through uh, a simple sequence of calls, similar to what you do when you create a socket and you bind it, in this case, you create a file descriptor and you bind to a physical device. When you do this uh, um, configuration, the connection between the network stack and the, and the device driver is cut, and you expose two ports, uh, the NetMap ports with those buffers and ring, et cetera, to user space. And from there, uh, you, you can use those ports to do uh, I/O either towards the physical uh, device 
or to the network stack. We have a way, of course, to, to inject traffic into the network stack and to grab traffic from uh, the network stack. And then at this point, uh, uh, you can do I.O. And the cost of doing I.O. this way is around 200, 250 nanoseconds per packet. Why is that? Well, because we are in this configuration, we are using the, uh, the device driver that uh, uh, was designed for use with the operating system, with all the, the overheads and the flexibility that uh, it carries. Um, the only thing that you need to, to run Net NetMap is this scanner module, which is uh, uh, very small and doesn't uh, make any, any modifications to the rest of the kernel. If you want a fast path, uh, we have uh, some uh, small patches, about 400, time, uh, 400 uh, lines uh, per device, uh, that uh, modify the receive and transmit blocks in the device driver. And in this case, uh, the performance that we can achieve is very similar to the one in, uh, uh, that you can get with the PDK or the other frameworks. Now, where is the difference? Uh, difference are basically now optimized is the code for a given architecture or chipset, uh, whether we use huge pages or large pages or not, uh, cache affinity, et cetera, et cetera. All these things in NetMap uh, are not particularly optimized uh, for one reason. We believe that certain tasks, for instance, memory allocation, deciding where the pages are, or process affinity, et cetera, are the responsibility of the operating systems. And so we try to use the operating system as much as possible. Second thing, by using this architecture, we have already improved the, the, the performance of the path by an order of magnitude. Now, it is true that with some optimizations, uh, you, you can get uh, another 10, 20, 40 percent, but we are talking at this point uh, about uh, 10, 20 nanoseconds per packet. And those savings are easily killed by uh, mistakes or uh, inefficiencies in the application. So we, 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 think, we thought it was not really worth the effort. Also, we don't have a lot of manpower to dedicate to uh, these tasks. Uh, now, what else uh, you might want to do? Of course, uh, so as a comparison, this should be the architecture of the PDK. So you uh, expose the hardware to user space and you have a, a much larger uh, module for device driver, et cetera, up there. Uh, the next thing you want to do is have a software switch using the same API, and this software switch is implemented by the same block that, uh, that you see here. The same, once you load the NetMap module, you have both the switch and the pipes and the, uh, the standard device uh, um, access, uh, the, the inefficient one, etc. And the performance of the software switch also is pretty good. Uh, most of the work is on, on the transmit part. There is a copy involved when you transmit a packet. Uh, to, to keep the uh, clients uh, separated and uh, not sh uh, avoid the, the share information that they shouldn't. So the, the cost for transmission is about 50 nanoseconds per packet, and on, on receive, uh, it's just uh, the, the ring manipulation, so it's much lower, around 20 nanoseconds per packet. Of course, I'm talking about the best case uh, situation with no, no cash misses, uh, batching uh, relatively uh, large, and so on. Uh, of course, you can connect the switch to a physical device, uh, and so basically you have all the functionality of a Linux switch, etc. and uh, you see where this goes. Uh, the next thing you might want to do is replace the, uh, the function that uh, is uh, used by the switch to decide how to forward traffic uh, with something smarter than the, just uh, the simple learning bridge. And in fact, this function in NetPump uh, can be uh, programmed by another kind of module. And this is the way, I'm anticipating what I'm going to say next. Uh, this is the way we um, uh, integrate uh, OpenV switch and the, internal, the data plane of uh, uh, NetMap. Uh, the last features that we implemented recently, which might be of some interest, is a feature called the NetMap pipe. It's just a patch cord, which sometimes is used for, to interconnect virtual machines. Uh, this is completely zero copy and uh, uses the same API. So when you open the device uh, by just choosing the name, you, you can decide whether you want to attach the physical port or to a port of the valley switch or to a pipe, etc. Performance uh, uh, of the various configurations, uh, uh, and this is the usual disclaimer, blah, 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 best case, uh, in nanoseconds per packet is uh, about uh, uh, between 20 and 50 and 250 nanoseconds per, per packet. Uh, with large packets, uh, basically you are limited by the memory bandwidth and uh, the cost of the copy. With small packets, uh, you are limited by the overhead of the synchronization, which is uh, amortized over uh, batch size. Um, now, how did we integrate uh, OVS and, and, and NetMap? The, so the first experiment three years ago was uh, 
with the user space data plane. So uh, my student at the time, Gaetano Catalli, uh, took the um, net dev, uh, user space net dev, which uses the PF packet family, I think, and made um, uh, pick up uh, net dev. And uh, that pick up net dev was uh, uh, used to run uh, a net map using the pick up to net map adapter. So several layers. Uh, one of the things we did in that work was also uh, at an extra thread for the event loop uh, in charge of moving data because the original event loop, I don't know what's the situation now, but the original event loop was also handling all the, the um, other file descriptors that were involved uh, there. And um, we reached a throughput of about 3 million packets per second, which uh, is probably not very high seen today, but at the time uh, the, the user space data path was really slow. I think we it was below 100,000 packets per second. But anyways, th those modifications are uh, completely orthogonal to any improvement that's been done in uh, OpenV switch now. And basically the only thing that probably has not been upstream is the pickup uh, 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 NetDeb, which should be, if there is interest, uh, should be reasonably easy to, to port. For the kernel part, um, uh, the thing that we did was basically hook the um, OpenV switch functions that uh, in is in charge of uh, uh, running the packet through the, the flow table and deciding its, uh, its fate. So we have a wrapper that uh, uh, takes a NetMap buffer, uh, puts a fake SK buffer in front of it, uh, passes to OVS v port receive, and then uh, the output is used to decide on which uh, port of the valid switch or physical port the packet should go. And again, the throughput here is around the, the same number, three million packets per second, or 300 nanoseconds per packet, if you want. Uh, this, this was an experiment done with a single input, single output. Um, the the valid switch is completely parallel, at least for, um, for the forwarding plane part. So uh, ports uh, can forward traffic to independent ports without any uh, contention for locks. Of course, I have no idea what is the situation in OVS report receive, if whether there is any locking, et cetera. We, we are just using the function, so we uh, get all the performance and limitation of that particular function. There is a lot of room for improvement here because uh, in, this, uh, in this experiment, we didn't uh, do anything to uh, save, uh, uh, save in, when creating the wrappers around the NetMap buffers. We didn't try to uh, improve the batching, for instance, in calling the, uh, the SDP process uh, function and so on. Probably something could be done here, and I think we could try to leverage whatever work was done in the user space DPK version of NetMap and, and try to use the, the same trick and idea. Uh, okay, this is just a repetition of the uh, point where we hook into the, into the valley switch. Coming to virtual machines, um, now, uh, yes. Um, again, the, the, the speed of uh, the communication from the guest to the host or from the guest to another guest depends on a lot of uh, components. And, uh, and so basically this is, for instance, uh, well, this is what you have on, uh, um, on, on QM, which was the first system we tried. You have a guest driver that talks to a front end, that talks to a back end, that talks to a virtual switch. Every single, uh, this, every one of these components has its own performance problems that uh, should be addressed. So for the first part, uh, guest driver to front end, uh, paravirtualized driver were used to improve performance. Although, uh, and so we, we saw VirtIO, VMXNet, and so on. Although we found that uh, even a simple uh, E1000 slightly modified is very fast, it can be very fast. Uh, we implemented some uh, speed ups in the front end and back end, uh, basically related to the, the uh, avoiding copies and uh, avoiding the excessive translation between guest physical memory and, and uh, host virtual memory addresses, etc. And uh, at the bottom, uh, the connection from between the back end and the virtual switch, we replaced it up uh, with a faster API, uh, namely the NetMap API, and this has been upstreamed in, uh, in QM. Uh, the, the tricks are always the same. So for instance, we try to use batching. Uh, two years ago, we introduced this um, flag called more flag to, to let the, 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 the sender uh, give hints to the, to the next module that the packets shouldn't be processed immediately because there is another one coming soon and, and so on. Um, Paravirtualized drivers uh, are a mechanism that has been used uh, successfully to uh, improve the, the performance of the systems. And uh, 
And basically, the idea is that uh, you try to send notification uh, through shared memory instead of using interrupts and DM exits, and you have a thread on the host and on the guest uh, exchanging information and uh, running in parallel to, to um, pass these uh, notifications uh, around. Of course, you need a, a mechanism to stop and st start and stop this falling thread so that uh, you're not consuming two CPUs 100% uh, uh, of, the, of the time. Uh, we made some experiments to figure out how useful is the fully parameterized driver and the IO thread in this context. And surely it helps reducing uh, VM exits. Uh, the speed ups are very significant, but those exits can be reduced in um, other ways. For instance, uh, by um, using a technique called send combining, which I learned was invented at VMware in 99, 2000 for completely different reasons. But, but the idea is that uh, if, you are, uh, if you have to send a packet, which is going to cost you a uh, uh, VM exit, uh, and you know that there is some pending notification that will wake you up, uh, you don't send a packet immediately and, uh, and wait until you get the notification so you can send a batch in one shot. And that's very efficient. Interrupt moderation does the job for the receive side. And so basically we have a non parameterized 1000 with moderations and combining, which was uh, as fast as VTIO, uh, around half a million packets per second from the guest to, to the host. Uh, the, the, the other thing that parameterized drivers do is remove completely exits. If you, have, if you manage to keep the system streaming from the producer to the consumer, but the chain can be very long because you have uh, the guest application, it goes to the front end, back end, switch, and so on. If you manage to keep everything streaming, then you can get uh, a factor of almost two that we measured this, uh, this improvement in terms of performance. If you don't have this, uh, um, this property in the system, basically you will uh, have uh, the system working in parameterized mode uh, for a certain amount of time, then the buff buffer fills up, and then you, you, you have to stop, and, and you, you switch back and forth between these two modes of operation. Um, so, for instance, in QEMU, once we had all the batching enabled, et cetera, et cetera, the original, uh, the original data path was consuming 200 nanoseconds here, 80 nanoseconds here, 500 here, and we managed to reduce these numbers to the, the values that you see on, on the right. Uh, so, in terms of uh, hypervisor support, we work not only in QEMU, but in recent years, uh, uh, me and my colleagues work on Beehive and Zen, and the performance between guest and guest and guest and host is uh, listed in, um, in, the, in this slide. Depends, of course, of a number of factors. Um, the uh, basic support for these things uh, is uh, already available in part in, uh, in QEMU, in Beehive will come soon. In Zen, we follow two different approaches. The first one was to replace the um, Zen rings uh, with uh, uh, the netmap buffers and, and Vale. So we, it, was, it wasn't completely clean architecturally, although it was quite efficient, uh, because basically the netmap was out of the, of the, of the picture. Uh, now we have a slightly different uh, approach, which is more sane and more in line with the Zen architecture. So we have a modified net front and net back. And then the netback is just a device that attaches uh, to a valid switch. So that uh, provides communication from, uh, between, uh, between guests. Uh, okay, future work, uh, what do we are planning to do? So one thing that we are planning to do is, uh, and it's already uh, quite advanced, is a pass-through mode for, for netmap, which is uh, uh, similar to the pass-through mode that you have for physical devices, it lets you move data very efficiently with zero overhead, but uh, there is a cost in, uh, in uh, synchronization, of, of course, as we have seen in the previous pre presentation for the PDK. We are adding support for various uh, kinds of encapsulation of, of loadings so that uh, we can uh, move uh, uh, big chunks of data between uh, uh, virtual machines connected to the same switch without too much overhead. And uh, one thing that is taking a lot of time, will take a lot of time, is upstreaming all of our code and uh, integrate it, it in, the, in the various projects uh, we are uh, dealing with. Every project has its own uh, standards and um, story for uh, accepting changes. And uh, we are um, uh, part of the FreeBSD, we have been part of the FreeBSD community for a long time, but uh, we are not as well introduced in the other communities. So it will take some, some extra work. And so, as I promised, the acknowledgements, uh, uh, the list of people who work on this project is at the bottom, and the list of companies that have funded uh, our work is at the, at the top. And uh, the fact that they're funded us means that uh, also they have uh, 
means uh, I know that they've used the uh, NetMap and Vale internally for uh, application products, uh, research, etc. Anyways, uh, any any question you have, any interest you want, you have in trying uh, NetMap, uh, feel free to email me and uh, contact me. Thomas from Nora. Um, I realized that Stephen Hammond should try to push NetMap into the Linux kernel, mm -hmm. uh, I think last year or the year before, and there was some pushback. Uh, and one of the reasons that was given is that ideally this should be abstracted by AF packet. Uh, do, you see, do you see it as a viable option that we could use the NetMap IO model to op optimize the existing AF packet uh, in interface? Uh, I don't know enough uh, about the AF packet interface, so. Okay. Um, and we should maybe talk to see if, that's, if, that, if mm -hmm. that works out because I think that's a possible path into the, into the Linux kernel. And there was one more question on the WebEx, which was how does uh, NetMap compare to BPDK? In terms of, so the, the architecture you have seen, NetMap um, is... Uh, performance numbers wise. Performance numbers wise, I'm, I'm sure that BPDK can be slightly more efficient than NetMap. But then the difference in performance uh, uh, really depends on how, how well you optimize the code for a given architecture, et cetera. So uh, is, is the, probably the, the extra 20% that I personally don't care about and I don't have to, the, the energy to pursue. I'm sure that uh, Intel or MD or NIC manufacturer have a lot of motivation to, to go along this, uh, this path. Question, so you mentioned uh, cores. What kind of cores? What kind of? Cores. So, you said it's running on one core. What kind of core? Uh, like, so so all your numbers my tests were, were on uh, Intel i7, various, various generation of i7. So it started with uh, 2600, then uh, recently, what was i7, 3600, something like that. I mean, the, that's coming, that's kind of coming. So the, the, the CPU was between 2.8 gigahertz and uh, 3.1 gigahertz and uh, single socket machines. The dual socket machines tend to be slightly uh, difficult more difficult to, to, to work with because then you, you want to be sure that everything is on the same socket, memory, NIC, and uh, CPU, et cetera. And one last question. Uh, does, would something like the Volley Switch or Volley OVS improve, uh, so you gave the examples of uh, both hardware NIC to NIC and VM to VM. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any chance for improving uh, communication between containers? Um, so it depends on what, what is used by, by containers as the uh, API to communicate with the, with the system. So in general, uh, uh, I was mentioning to him uh, uh, yesterday, we are adding support for namespaces to the valley switch. So each, each, uh, each uh, container will be able to see its own, uh, its own switch, its own ports, et cetera, without interference with the others. Then of course, if you want to communicate faster, you cannot use a tap because that's too slow. And that API is really too slow. You, you need some other mechanism. So the, the valid port could be, uh, could be one. All right, uh, let's thank our speaker. <clears throat>